Hello everyone, thanks again for tuning into Sims Workshop. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. So, today is my March reading wrap up. You know what? I'm actually prepared this month. <laughs> yes! Um, I only got to read nine books this month. Um, I know I had, what did I have a goal of? Like 11, 13, 16? I don't know. I always set myself up for like really high expectations and then I always fall short. There was still that one month that I read 17 books, so there is always hope. <laughs> um, but, you know, I only read eight, not eight, nine books this last month, and, um, you know, at least this month it wasn't a bust. At least I didn't have any DNFs, I didn't have any one stars. They were all really good books that I thoroughly enjoyed reading. Um, so, we're going to start with, I hope this doesn't find you. This is a young adult contemporary novel, um, I have to say. This is not usually, you know, my forte. I don't, I don't really go out of my way to read young adult romances. Um, that's my my friend Gina's thing. She can keep that thing. <laughs> I tend to read a lot of, if you are familiar with the channel, a lot of young adult fantasy, um, high fantasy, science fiction. You know, all of those things. And yes, there's romance in them, and they tend to be a subplot. They don't tend to be the overall arching part of the story. So. I hope this doesn't find you. It was a really good read for me. Um, <laughs> um, it's an enemies to lovers. It's about two teenagers. And um, it's about Sadie and Julius. And they're both like in line to be valedictorian. And they're both Asian at this very, you know, uh, I guess prep school, right? where everyone kind of has money, and everyone's kind of rich, and everyone's just kind of blah, right? And so they're one of the few Asian kids, and they also happen to be top of their class, and they're always vying to be better than the other. <laughs> um, but Sadie has this habit of, t you know, typing up draft emails that she never intends to send, telling people off, and I'm like, I get that. I totally get that. Like, I'm going to write this letter. I'm never going to send it. Kind of in, in the, like, to, um... To all the boys I loved before, but these are all like messages to like everyone in school, including administration. Um, they get sent out by accident, and she's like, "Oh no, oh no!" And as much as she hates Julius, he can't but help noticing like you're obsessed with me, and I'm like, "Oh god, this is like so cringe." I feel so bad for this girl. I read this book in a day, in a day. Me. A young adult contemporary romance. I read this book in a day. <laughs> it was fun. Um, it did have a lot of depth to it. I really did enjoy it and I do highly recommend it. Um, after that I read The Immortal Games. Oh, this was such a good book. Um, it has a lot of Hunger Games vibes. So the gods of Olympus have a tournament every year, right? And the tournament is set by Hermes and they pick their own tributes. Now, oh my god, Hades. Hades is just swoon-worthy in this book. Like, ah, oh, I love him. I do like how the author represented the gods and the personalities and also the familial dynamics between them. But also, Hades' relationship with um, Ara. OMG. That was... That was good. I... I love their budding romance, how they start as, you know, friends like, we're in this together, don't worry, I'm gonna do my best to keep you alive, because it's, it's a gamble for the gods, they do have to roll dice, um, it's a, it's a game for them, and there can only be one winner. Now, really, the tributes are not supposed to kill each other, and they're not supposed to be able to harm each other, so they do tend to work together, and they form lots of really good friendships with one another, and I really enjoyed that as well. You can see... We were off to a great start this last month, and it's just going to keep going. <laughs> Murder at a Scottish Castle um, by Tracy Hall is the next book I read after Immortal Games. Um, such a good cozy fantasy. I really do love cozy fantasies. They are... I think what I like about cozy fantasies... Not cozy fantasies, although I do like cozy fantasies as well. Cozy mysteries is... There's always that thought, you know, it's a murder mystery. Of course it's a murder mystery. But when it comes to cozies, there's also a lot of characterization and we're really getting involved in who these characters are and their life is outside.
outside of the murder. Because remember, in cozies, it's not the legal aspect. You know, there's no cop or FBI agent or any government official hunting a murder. It's just some, I mean, she has a knitting store and she's helping investigate this murder. <laughs> she's a knitter. She knits. She's a single mom. You're really getting involved in who these characters are and, you know, their mindsets and everything she's struggling with. You know, she's being a single mom, like she's getting back into dating. It's fun, it's lighthearted, but it has a lot of relatability to it as well. And that's another reason why I like Cozy so well, because that's what they focus on, you know, not just the murder mystery aspect, but also these characters and their lives. So really another really good read for me. I will say I have some apprehensions with this next book. Um, the one that got away with murder. I liked the story. Um, but when it came to the reveal of the murderer, I was kind of confused as to his motive. I, I really couldn't understand. Is their motive because they're trying to protect someone or is their motive because just the way, I don't want to say anything and spoil things for you because the person who is the murderer, not even on my list of suspects to be perfectly honest. So that part I did like, but I didn't understand the motive. And I did get a little frustrated at times. Um, I mean, again, the, they're teenagers. They're trying to investigate a murder. They're, they're teenagers. They've, it was a little all over the place, but I get why. Because again, they're teenagers. So it makes sense why the investigation seems a little bit all over the place, but these characters have also individually gone through so much in their lives that they're letting a lot of their internalized um, trauma kind of define how they're viewing this investigation and how it's unraveling. So it, it makes sense to the plot, even though it is a little frustrating. And it did keep me engaged. There wasn't a moment where I didn't want to pick up the book. and it, There was no moment where I just wanted to put the book down and forget about it. I wanted to see, like, who is the murderer? Who murdered these two girls? Like, I was like, was it that person? Was it that person? Like, what's going on? Who murdered him? So I was intrigued with the plot. Uh, I did like the characterization, even though it was frustrating at times. But, but that reveal at the end, it's, it's not that it didn't make sense. I just didn't understand the motive because there are a couple chapters there where you're in the murderer's point of view. So it was that internalized dialogue and just the way they were describing things. It's just like, I'm not, I don't quite understand what your motive is. Why did you kill those two girls? I get why you killed the boy, but why did you kill the two girls? What was your, I don't understand. I, I was, maybe I missed something when I was reading it, but it left me, it left me wanting. So it's the only reason that it only gets like three and a half stars instead of four, because I just didn't understand the murderer's motive. All right, The Girl With No Reflection. This is another one that gets three and a half out of five stars. Not that it was a bad read, I did like it. It gave me a lot of, um, God, the Mirror World movie by Jim Henson. It made me think of that movie a lot when I was reading it because Princess Ying, she gets swept up into the mirror world and everyone in the mirror world wants to take over the real world. There's a lot of history there. There's a lot of mythology. I wanted her to listen more. She was very frustrating at times. I liked her. I liked her ferocity, but there were just some times where I wanted her to just stop, think about the consequences before acting, you know? She was giving so many opportunities to do that um, for like the first half of the book and they're like, oh my god, stop, take a deep breath, analyze the situation. I understand where you're coming from with this, but you also know the consequences of what's going to happen if you act. So it was a little frustrating at times. This is another one that was really frustrating, but I did like the story. I was, it was engaging to me. Um, and at least she does grow as a character. 
she does develop as a character. And then especially the romance she forms with the prince. I loved that. How she lets go, lets, lets, how she let go of her <laughs> um, misgivings and learns more and understands, um, you know, his position and where he came from their dynamic grows, their relationship grows. So I did like that ultimately. It was engaging. And the way the story ended, I was like, oh, this is good. This was a good book. It's a good nice standalone um, if you're looking for a good standalone um, fantasy. So, I mean, it was a good story. Just sometimes she was very, very frustrating and I'm like, oh my God, stop and listen. Um, but ultimately it was, you know, it was a good book. I didn't thoroughly enjoy it. All right, bless your heart. So this is a book I again read in I think a day and a half. It was so good. I'm a person who likes horror. I love vampires. I love zombies. I love all that shit. This book follows a family. They have a funeral home. All women. And what do they do? Well, when the when the spirit gets restless and comes back from the dead, they put it back down. And I really, really really enjoy that um you have you know loon you have luna who's the youngest um gracie i didn't write all their names down lenore and then let's see four generations of women i can't remember the great i can't remember the grandmother's name but regardless so it has strigoi now it's not like your typical strigoi and it's kind of like vampire zombie fusion <laughs> almost is the best way I can describe it. It was really good. That's the best thing I can tell you. It was so good. Luna was great. Every character gets their own, like for the women, they each have their own point of view. They're, it's just a fun story. If you're looking for a fun horror that has, you know, zombie elements to it and vampire elements to it, this is definitely going to be the book for you. It's so, it was just so good. I read it in a day and a half. <laughs> I'm like, here, I know I took this book, but I'm, I'm bringing it back now. <laughs> it was such a fun book. I highly recommend it. I can't wait to read more from Lindy Ryan, to be perfectly honest with you. All right. Um, the Barnes and Noble book club um pick for march was where the dark stands still i don't know why i cannot remember that book title there would be sometimes i'm like what's it called again <laughs> i don't know why i was just blanking i'm like i bought the special edition of this book from waterstones even though i liked it so I, at least it's not a regretful purchase there's that <laughs> even though i did get um, an arc from the publisher I bought that Waterstones exclusive with the stenciled edges because oh, it was gorgeous. And my color sting teals and blues and greens and purple. Oh, that's my color scheme for sure. For sure, dude. Um, but it was a really good book. Um, if you like Beauty and the Beast, you're definitely going to like this book. It has a lot of Beauty and the Beast vibes to it, which I personally enjoy. I love Beauty and the Beast. It's my favorite fairy tale. Um, and, you know, she wants to give up her magic because she thinks her magic is bad. She thinks, you know, she was, that's how she was raised. She was raised by her mother to think, oh, no, this gift you have, it's not a gift, it's a curse. Um, and, oh, my God, this poor girl. Her mom's not the greatest, as you discover, as the story continues. But she is just, she has had some trauma. And really, she just thinks her magic is a curse and wants to get rid of it. So she goes into the woods um, to make a deal with the Lesky, with the Leshy, Les, Leshy, Leshy. I'm not really great with the pronunciations. So, oh well. That's what we spoke about on our book club. Like, ee, the pronunciations. Thank God for the audiobook because I did go back and forth between the audiobook and the physical book. Um, just so I wouldn't fall behind. Like, I'd read and then when I was at work, I'd be like earbud in and listening to the book so but at least I got to really hand sell it <laughs> but I mean it was really really interesting to see her develop as a character to see her overcome her trauma and find her inner power and become this new guardian of the woods and that romance that developed between her and the, the Leshy Lesky 
gosh, I can't pronounce it. Her and Beast, there, between her and Beast. <laughs> um, it was really well done, especially because there's a lot of history there as to how he became the way he did and how he himself is also cursed. So, but it was his own doing. But it was still, you know, it was a really good story. It did move a little slow at times, but the magical house, the ghost cat, the spirits that haunt, haunted the house. I mean, they all have such great personalities. Even the hearth, ha, house has a personality. <laughs> it was good. It was fun. It was entertaining, and I really did enjoy it. After that, um, I read Lake's, Lake's Edge. So this one was one of my audiobooks that I did. And I have to say, given the cover, I was expecting more Crimson Peak vibes just because the cover looks so much like Crimson Peak. I was really just, oh, it's Crimson Peak. Let's let's do this thing, right? It was a little slow moving at times. And especially because I was expecting more Crimson Peak vibes there's still a really good atmosphere to the story. You know, you have the Lord Under, who's like the god of the dead almost, and you have magic, and you have this cursed lake that's kind of corrupting the land, and they have to try to break this curse. There's a lot of plot twists I didn't see coming. And honestly, the relationship between um, Violetta and Roman that was really well done. I do I, I do want to say that. I mean, like, at the end, my heart kind of, like, broke a little bit. I was like, oh, God, now I need to read book two. <laughs> it was just kind of sad. Um, in the same way that Where the Dark Stands Still was a little sad, although that one, while it was bittersweet and kind of broke my heart, that one left me with, like, a little bit of hope at the end, whereas this one just kind of... I, I, I did not feel hope. I'm like, oh my god, no. Like, how are they going to save her? What's going to happen? No, 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 no. And I'm like, Roman deserves a happy ending. She deserves a happy ending. So, you know, now I need to read the second book because I, I need to see these two get their happy ending. I need to see how the story comes to a good, solid conclusion. <laughs> Um, but that, to me, that's a note of a good story. When it makes me interested and really eager to read the second book, that, to me, speaks of a good story. And last but not least, my book club, Read With Sims Workshop, pick was Spinning Silver, and I finished that. It's supposed to be Rumpelstiltskin um, retelling. I will tell you this. It is a little slow. Um, for about half the book, it's really slow. It has a lot of story building. You know, it's building up the characters. It's building up a lot of that fantasy. So... It is a little slow, but I think one of the most redeeming aspects of Naomi Novik's writing is her atmosphere. This really did feel like the grim fairy tale that I was reading. I think her storytelling and her atmosphere is so good. And also, her characterization is awesome! Irina, she stole the show, man! She becomes a badass, and not in a badass like in a fighting way, but in the badass because she is smart. And she is clever, and she uses her, the words against the Chernabog so well. And I'm just like, you are awesome. I cannot wait to see you be this arena. You are awesome, and I love you so much. She is so... Just, you think she's just going to be like this minor character early on in the book. No, she comes ahead, and she is awesome. Um, me, Wanda and Miriam... Also really good characters, but, and they're both strong in their own right, but I think Irina is the one that really stood out for me as the strongest character. And the story starts with Miriam. You think she's going to be the main character, and it does, it starts with her and it ends with her. Her and her relationship with the Steric, um, who's Rumpelstiltskin, basically. I liked it at the end how their relationship, like, really just, like, sped up and unfolded and, like, just came to a head and I'm just like wow she flipped it on you and that that made you fall in love with her that's that was kind of funny I'm just like all right all right whatever floats your boat Rumpel oh um, <laughs> but you know what there we go it was a really good month as you can see it was a really really good month for me as far as reading is concerned nine books not my typical 10 or 11 but um nine books are still really well done I absolutely loved reading this month and they were all really good books I think some of them as you 
saw I had some frustrations with, but ultimately, very good. And anyway, in any case, thank you again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your book loving friends. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy reading. <laughs>